Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton show. We hope you all enjoyed the international break and wasn't it nice to go into that little mini recess on the back of two consecutive wins. A chief contributor to six points from six was Leighton Baines who was alongside me this week. Thanks for joining us Leighton. So important to win any Premier League game but especially when there's an international break. You don't want to, you don't want to defeat to linger do you? No you don't and they're always difficult ones when say if you're on a bad run or just even a loss because you can't really address it and everyone goes off you can't review it. Or do anything really, but uh, you know it always makes the the break that much nicer to go in the, into it with a with a win, and obviously we we got a couple of important wins as well. So it means that you know the lads who've gone away can fully focus on on their international stuff, and then we we start to prepare for the for the running. Football dressing rooms are notoriously ruthless for banter. When you go on international duty, you've been on many international duties. Is the banter between players about league placings, or is that just a line that you don't cross? Uh, I don't think I've ever really experienced it. Um, I think, particularly at this end of the season, now you might have lads normally, if they're competing for you know certain spots in the league, mm. um, having a little word in each other's ear every now and again and, and things like that. But uh, yeah, I think when once you get there, you know, the, the, say the, the focus tends to to shift on on the job you're doing there and uh, and sort of try and put your, your your club stuff to one side for a while. Glad to be back. Glad to be back playing. Yeah, it's a frustrating layoff really, and uh, it ended up being longer than than what we originally thought. And uh, just, I say, it was just more of a niggly problem that just was persistent. But thankfully, sort of got back. I had to take the the long road, but got back, and it was nice to to play a couple of games and to win a couple of games and sort of be reacquainted with that winning feeling. It was nice. Are you a bad patient or are you an impatient patient? Um, probably a bit of both. A bit of both. Uh, yeah, I tend to, I tend to want to to push things a bit, and say for the medical department, it can I think that it, you know it can it can work both ways. You know, it, you've, at least you've got someone who wants to work. But sometimes trying to, as most of the players would be, you just want to get back out with the team and back. So you're always pushing for that. And when am I going to be back? And you know, there's there's certain steps you've got to take, and you know, it, it can be it can be um, frustrating, but. As you get older, you, you learn mm. that those are the things you've got to you've got to do. You've got to listen to the experts and the people who know what they're doing and and trust what what they're doing, and and you will come back and be fine. And the, you clearly between you got it right because you came back in and straight away a full ninety minutes, which must have been so important for you. Yeah, uh, like I say it ended up being quite a quite a long layoff, so wasn't too sure how I'd feel in the game uh, against Brighton in the end, but it was it was quite comfortable. Um, and as I say it was you're able to use your experience as well and sort of manage yourself as much as you can you're obviously not in control of everything throughout a game but I, I felt good in the game and like I say that that was a a plus because like I say it was a it was a long layoff and probably in season the longest layoff I've had mm. you know at, at sort of you know uh, as an older player now as well so it was always I did have a couple of question marks as to uh how I was going to feel, but I felt fine. Great to have you back. And also great to have this fellow back. This is Seamus Coleman. The reception I see coming out was, was something that I've been longing for from, from, from the day that I got injured. My, my thoughts the, the day after the operation was I can't wait to get that green shirt for Ireland back on and I can't wait to get that blue Everton shirt back on. And that, that just drove me on my whole rehab just to, to get back out playing football. I have a serious passion for football, which I think helped me in my rehab. I, I wanted to work every day. I didn't want any days off. And, you know, in the end, I think the work you put into your rehab really shows when you come back. And, you know, I wanted to show people that, you know, there's going to be no after effect of this injury. Obviously, the, the support I got from, from everyone from the day I got injured right through till the very end is, is something that, that, that drove me on, really. I got unbelievable support from, from everyone back home in Ireland initially when, when I'd done a plane from a national team. Spent a month in Ireland, People, the people of home couldn't do enough for me. Um, I came back here to, to Everton and you know, I got, got meted with a, a couple of bags of cards from uh, supporters and just to know that you have that effect on people and people genuinely were concerned um, to, see, to see me come back and to make sure that I was okay. And, and it's it's for people like that that you you know you work really hard in the gym because you want you want people to know that their support has really helped you. I don't know why the the relationship with the fans is so good. As I said, 
I just I just do my job. I just co- go to work. I go to Finch Farm. You know, I treat people with respect. I, I I want the best for myself. I want the best for my teammates. I want everyone to give their best. And I come here on a Saturday and you know get my kit on and I I, I try for the for the 95 minutes. I give I give it my all. I try and get the team to win. I, you know, go for tackles. Just I think that's what Everton fans relate to. And, uh, they've obviously taken to me and I just want to make sure that I keep performing well and uh, keep everyone happy. Everybody associated with the football club got a huge lift from seeing the return of Seamus Coleman. Yeah, definitely. He's, he's, a, he's a key player for us and um, you know, he, he's grown into that, you know, particularly these last few years. Um, and he just, I think he, he, he lifts everything on the pitch. I think he's, uh, his energy is fantastic, his quality is now developed into a leader and grown into that role as well, and he brings so much to the table. Um, I think, you know, that I think even for the fans, mm. you know, it gives everyone a lift. Seeing him back on the pitch, he's always capable of creating a goal, scoring a goal himself, and um, you know, you see, you know, he had such a long time out himself uh, with with a real bad injury, and he and he come back in and you know just look like a bundle of energy as he always does. So. Uh, having him in any team is always going to lift, lift you. Have you enjoyed watching Seamus develop from a, a young boy unsure of himself who came over from Sligo and was pitched into the Premier League? He's now an international captain. Yeah, I have. I've really enjoyed watching that, watching him grow, and uh, I've got so much respect for him. He, he's a he's a fantastic player. We all know that, but he's a great man as well. Mm. You know, uh, I like a lot of. You know what what he stands for and what he's about. You know he's a bit of a throwback in many respects. Mm. And um, yeah, I've I've really enjoyed watching him come over and seeing him. And he's you know he was really humble and uh, he, he still used, is, isn't he? Yeah, he is absolutely. Yeah, but he used to like spending time around the lads, and you'd see he was mostly listening and learning, watching, and you know just so so sort of happy to be here. But then he had this determination as well. He'd get out there and. You know, he'd run through walls on, a, on even on the training pitch, and he was just so desperate to do well. Um, and he, you know, he's one of them. He's one of them, those people who you can feel their energy. Hmm. Um, and I say he deserves every bit of success he's had, and and hopefully, you know, everything that comes to him because he's worked so hard for it. And I say, not just a, a great player, but he's a he's a great person as well. Everybody makes a lot of the, the partnership between a left back and your left midfielder and the likes of your right back and your right midfielder. Do you need to develop a partnership with your right back in any way, shape or form? It uh, depends what the tactical instruction from the manager is. Um, played under the managers who are quite happy uh, for both full backs to be advanced and for other people um, to fill in and do certain roles within the team. Traditionally, you'd normally you know try and have one going and one staying and things like that. So in that sense, you can sometimes need a bit of a relationship because you can be in the blocks ready to go, but if your mate on the other side isn't quite ready, covering around yet, you, you can hold your run and things like that. But mostly those things happen instinctively anyway. Mm. Um, and you know, if you do see, you know, that the play is going to go out and develop up the other side, you, you tuck back around. So, so it all depends on the manager's instruction and, and how sort of strict they are with that instruction as well. And say some some games, you know it. You'll be told not to not to venture too far. Um, I say depending on what the tactical information is and who you've got in front of you as well. So it, it, that can that can change all the time. Did you enjoy what we showed on the Everton show a couple of weeks ago when Leighton met the Leightons? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it's interesting to see so many so many kids with the name. I say I think I was definitely the only one when I was a kid growing <laughs> up. And I'm not sure where my mum produced it from. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting to see uh, that there's so many knocking about nowadays. It's surreal, isn't it, really? Yeah, it is, especially, like say, some of them tell, will tell you, or the parents will tell you that they, they've been named after you and stuff like that. And yeah, I guess just reminds you that you're a footballer. Well, of course, that event, meeting all the Leightons, was uh, part of the season ticket campaign. I'd just like to remind everybody that the season ticket deadline is next Friday, the 6th of April. 
So remember, if you are an existing season ticket holder and you don't renew by next Friday, you will lose your seat. The 10-month direct debit deadline, by the way, is Saturday the 31st of March this weekend. For those existing season ticket holders looking to spread the cost of their season ticket for next term. And if you're not an existing season ticket holder but you'd like to purchase one for next season, you can register your interest online at evertonfc.com forward slash home. 1819. And that's just about it for part one of this week's programme. Plenty more to come from Leighton Baines in part two, and we'll also hear from Phil Jagielka and Sam Allardyce. <laughs>Welcome back. I'm in the company of Leighton Baines here at USM Finch Farm and we're about to start the countdown to the weekend visit of the champions-elect Manchester City to Goodison Park. But before I hear from Leighton, this is what Phil Jagielka makes of it all. Obviously they're a great team, but we've got a very good team as, as well that can hurt them. You know, I was a bit disappointed we didn't get the win at the Etihad. Obviously I had the man sent off, which, yeah. which helps because normally when you play against them it feels like they've got a man extra. But no, it's, in, it's interesting. It's... Um, Obviously, the manager, Man City's manager, Pep, came over and didn't do as well as a lot of people would have thought he would have done in his first season. But uh, he's obviously the one with the last, last, last now. He's he's created the team and the the work ethic and the the ideas that he wants over a pretty short space of time. And so everyone's really excited about watching this Man City team. But hopefully, we can introduce him to a to a good as an atmosphere and a team that now is is hopefully a bit more confident. And uh, will We'll play the extra pass, we'll keep onto the ball a little bit extra uh, and, and put them under a little bit more pressure. And for you personally, you have to use your experience a lot when you're coming up against players like Sergio Aguero, Gabriel Jesus, if he plays. Is it about being able to read the game? Yeah, I think, um, I'm guessing obviously with the way they play, the the, the movement, you know, they, they, they do try and drag you out of areas to, to create space for runners and stuff like that. So it's a case of trying to stay pretty compact dealing with the ball when it comes in your area. But as I said before, when we get the ball, we need to make sure that we don't just give it them straight back or you know, we put them under a bit of pressure. Uh, that would probably be their weakest link. Is But I think if, if you still look at their defensive record, it's still second yeah. to none. Uh, the way they defend is with the ball. They keep you uh, away from their own goal by keeping the ball so much. So there'll be ways to be able to get at them. Uh, we need to make sure we know that. But at the same extent, um, be prepared for a really tough game. Bainsey, 10 years together, yourself and Jags, you probably know him better than anyone. Yeah, it's been it's been a, a, a fun 10 years really. I think we, we knew each other a little bit because uh, we'd come up from the Championship, played against each other there into the into the Premier Leagues and I think he signed you know a month or so before me. Um, but yeah, it's, it was great, it's been great and I think there was a few lads at that time who like Jolien and a few other people, we'd all kind of come from that sort of background, so it was mm -hmm. nice to come in to, to the environment where, you know, people, like I say, you, you were still familiar with people. I was obviously only done a couple of years at that point in, in the Premier League and uh, it just, you know, it just felt like the perfect move for me, the perfect fit and um, you know, it's been great. Has it gone over quickly? Sometimes you think, yeah, it's, it, it really has flew. I mean, when you talk about 10 years, um, and but then, you know, then you start to trace things back and remember things and think, wow, you know, so it, it, it doesn't seem like so long ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's, um, it's a funny career. I think sometimes mm. in football and, and things can, can move and change so quickly, but I, I've been lucky. I've had sort of that continuity. I haven't, you know, moved around too much. I haven't, you know, had the ups and downs and spent too long out of a team and had, and, uh, and those different dramas that people can have, so I've been really pleased with that. Every time I hear a former professional speaking to a current professional, they always give the same advice, enjoy every minute because it's over in the blink of an eye. Do you recall a moment when you started to think to yourself, I'm a senior pro here now? Um, I don't know about, I think a, a moment I do remember was just sort of, it took a good few years to earn the trust of David Moyes, I thought, you know, he, he, it was just the style of management and you really mm. had to keep plugging away at it and he'd keep nitpicking and you keep plugging away and that was just his style and I just, uh, you know, I would say it took me a few years and I was probably, you know, 25, 26, maybe even 27 and it just, I just remember he'd stopped doing it, you know, he just started to trust me and, and then started to ask me questions and bring me into that sort of group. And I think, yeah, that was maybe a moment when you think, you know, 
<laughs> at last, you know, we might be <laughs> off my case a little bit. Let's look ahead to the weekend. How do you stop Manchester City? I mean, plenty have tried and failed, haven't they? And I think, you know, we did a good job when we went there early mm -hmm. in the year, uh, went ahead. But, you know, they look like, you know, at, the, at this moment in time, one of the outstanding Premier League teams that, the, that there's ever been. Do you enjoy watching them? Yeah, they're, they're just so easy on the, on the eye and interesting as well to see what they're trying to do. Obviously, they've got a very creative manager uh, who's, got, who's also got phenomenal players and, you know, you know that fits like a glove really to have you know that, that those players at your disposal when you when you want to you know do slightly different things to to sort of the conventional way of setting your team up and and they they just look unstoppable at sometimes but as I say they they have been shown that it, it can be done but you've got to be on your A game to do it it will be if selected your 400th premier league game for Everton and Wigan you four short of 400 appearances for Everton are they targets and statistics that you're aware of or do you have to wait for the likes of me to point them out? Yeah, and it, normally people start to bring it to your attention as you're approaching something. It's not it's not something that I always keep an eye on. But they are nice to sort of just sort of acknowledge and put to one side almost really little things like that. You, once you've been around for a while, they start creeping up. Um, you start getting told that you've got this ben, uh, landmark com coming up or that landmark coming up. So they're good things and I'm sure once you've finished and you look back you, mm. you'll be proud of them. Absolutely, so you should be. It's Everton versus Manchester City at Goodison Park at the weekend. This is Sam Allardyce's take on meeting a team that will probably win the league. I think there's no doubt about walking out on the pitch. It, it, what, what is your frame of mind? And do you have to be in a positive frame of mind to get out there and challenge yourself against Manchester City and say that we can uh, we can go and challenge them and we can play against them and on any given day you can get results against them but we will have to play our best there's no doubt about that we've got to master our game plan tomorrow throughout the 90 minutes to to get a result against the team that's you know riding i i don't think anybody's ridden eye at the top of the premier league this far away ever in 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 its involvement so um it's a big challenge for us and and I think one we should really look forward to on the basis that we've, we've just come off the back of a back-to-back -back wins. We've got a good home record. There's a few players missing that we'd maybe like to make fit, but the ones who have been out on the pitch have been doing the business recently. So go, on, go and do your very best and see if that's good enough on the day. On form since you took over here, Everton are sixth in the Premier League. What does that do for your own position? Do you feel? What does it do for my own position? It just says that, that we've um, steadied the ship and we've uh, uh, we put um, fears of relegation behind us, you know, considerable time ago really, because I can't remember. Was all, I think there's only been at the top half for maybe a week or two since I've been here, you know, so we went on the run early and then we picked up points and particularly at home, but you know, we've, we've sort of stayed in, in and around 10th or better for a long period of time now, so now it's about the last seven games on how many points we can we can total up. As well and as of that. course these these two big games now are our biggest challenge of the season, of course, at home. So can we get some points against Manchester City and Liverpool and, and then go on from there? We were talking about your approaching four hundred games as an Everton player. A lot of them you played alongside Stephen Pienaar and people quite rightly heaped a lot of praise on the partnership. Was that one of your most favourite parts of your career? Definitely, yeah. I consider myself very lucky to have had that, that period of time at the football club with Stephen here because he's such an outstanding player. Um, and, you know, a lot of what we did was just instinctive. And I think, I say, very lucky to have come across him really um, because the type of players we both were and our mm. profiles just suited each other. You know, we're both combination players we both needed each other because you know we didn't want to do it alone like say you got different players Seamus can can go and do things on his own a lot of the time um, you know I, my, my style was, was different and that just happened to be exactly you know the right thing for Stephen as well and we, we just use each other to, to combine and, and get us up the pitch and uh, yeah, he was he was always quite happy to to let me do the end part and uh, 
you know, we had a manager as well who wanted balls in the box and just mm -hmm. wanted you to cross it. So, yeah, that that time just just worked out perfect. And I think you know he, he he's a player that I think the fans will always will always love and look back on fondly. Well, we've got you here, Leighton. Just speak about the next game, which is uh, Liverpool after Manchester City. We don't like to look too far ahead, but do you still relish Merseyside derbies as much as ever? Yeah, especially like I say, you know, as you. As you're getting older and stuff, you, you're not sure how many you're going to have left and how you're going to be around for. So it'd be it'd be great to to go and get a get a win there at Goodison, um, and hopefully we can we can get a decent result as well against City and, and set us up for that. I think it's a it's a great opportunity this last phase of the season, mm. you know, to to get some big results at Goodison Park. There's good opportunities there for that with with those two games. And then also, you know, for the rest of the running, we could really finish. I think we could finish strongly. And if we do this at this end part of the season, right? I mean, it, it could could finish in the perception of the season, which at times because of our struggle hasn't been great. I feel like could shift massively if we do the right things between now and the and the end. Two big games to look forward to. And don't forget, for all your season tickets information ahead of next week's deadline, simply visit Everton FC. Com. My thanks enormously to Leighton Baines for joining us this week and to you for watching. Do join us again for another Everton show next week.